has to deal with one Cat Williams, man. Right? Cat Williams broke the motherfucker in. And I mean, Cat Williams, man, just... <laughs> nigga had the internet going man still got the internet going to this day nigga i think that episode of club shay shay aired about four days ago here i am about to talk about it there's thousands of videos of people like nitpicking everything that cat williams had said in that in, in that particular interview you got comics and and and, and rappers responding to shit that Cat Williams had to say in that interview. And he he it was a two and a half hour fucking interview. Cat Williams sat with Shannon Sharp and they talked about a gang of shit, right? And it's been interesting, like, to kind of watch how it's been received. Um, you know, I'm I I I I I'm wasn't even trying to be like the contrarian. Like I really I try I try not to be, man. I don't I don't want to be the the nigga that like, you know, yuck anybody's yum or anything like that, man. I want folks to enjoy things. I want people to be happy, man. It's like it brings me I like when people are happy about some shit, man. For real, real talk. But uh like I, as I was watching the like the interview, I was like, am I seeing the same shit that these niggas are seeing cuz I'm like, nigga. Like <sighs> right? And so, like, I think that, like, I, the, the first thing that happened was this, right? So, for me, I'm just going to speak on my, on my own behalf, right? First thing I saw was uh, there was the clips of Cat Williams saying that Cedric the Entertainer stole his joke, right? Now, we know that as a cardinal sin in the comedy game. You know, I'm a fan of comedy. I watch a lot of comics. I don't, I wouldn't necessarily, I wouldn't necessarily say that I am a, a, a comedy connoisseur or comedy expert. If I find some shit funny, I'll go, I, I find this shit funny. I will go to a comedy show. I will go out and I will support, you know, up and coming comics and stuff like that and go watch them and perform and stuff. I am a fan of the, I'm a fan of the genre, right? I'm a fan of the genre. I'm a fan of most of the people that Cat Williams mentioned. I am a fan of Cat Williams. Right. So I say all that to say that, like, I'm listening to him talk about Cedric the Entertainer stealing his joke. Right. And then lo and behold, you know, YouTube and Twitter, you know, and to some degree, threads, you know, not not as it, threads isn't exactly at the level of, of black Twitter just yet. Right. As much as I am just like I'm, I've been using threads pretty much exclusively the last few months, uh, it's still not uh like the full-blown in replacement for black twitter it's just not neither is spill or any of the other places black twitter is still black twitter despite elon musk right and so um you know people you know found the clip of uh cat williams who was at, at the time going by cat in the hat on comic view where he was performing the joke about you know having sounds in the car but the car is sort of like it's a hoopty you know what I'm saying? It's a hoopty. And like he, he, you know, he does the joke and he gets out of the car, checks the engine on the car and shit like that. Car still get like the car got sounds though, right? Car hoopty, but it got sounds. And then like he has to eventually at some point get out, push the damn car. That was a joke, right? Now, Cat Williams had uh accused Steve, I mean, I'm not Steve Harvey, but he did talk about Steve Harvey too. But he accused uh, uh Cedric the Entertainer of stealing that joke and uh performing it as his closing joke on the kings of comedy right and so i watched both of the clips i watched both of them and i'm like eh, i get it but i don't think they're the same joke right i don't think they're the same joke that was me right and so i had like some conversations with some folk and they were like yo spam man you tripping it's the same premise it's the same joke you know one of yeah he says it's about a spaceship but it's the same thing and i'm like all right so here's the deal to me to me i'm speaking for myself in this moment i thought that the the, the here's my thinking on it they're both from they're both black they're both from urban communities and we all know all across America, there are, there, are certain, there are certain things that are commonalities in every hood across America. You always going to have the hood nigga that got the, like, he got a hooty, but he got sounds, or he got a hooty and he got rims. Like, this is something that I think everybody around, across America can kind of, like, well, in our community, I think that we can all can kind of relate to that, right? So I thought that, yeah, the, the, the inspiration probably came from the same place in that, like, yo, man, we all know somebody with a car like that. We all know somebody who drives like that, right? That's what I got from it. 
not to say that like it's impossible that Cedric the Entertainer stole a joke or whatever. I'm just saying that like, yo, I could see how these jokes are similar, but I could I also can see how these jokes are not similar, right? And people was like, nah, he stole that. Cat ain't lied about nothing. It's like, all right, I guess you know I'm not I'm not about to fight you niggas over this. I mean, it's not that deep, it's not that deep to me. I'm saying I see something different. I'm seeing like the variations between the two. I can get I get the similarities between them, but also I can see how these two things are also a little bit different, right? And that was that was that was interesting to me to like kind of watch how people were laying down the gauntlets on <laughs> on the on, on the things that Cat Williams was saying, right? And so interestingly enough, there was a there was a like uh, another comedian, Chicago based comedian, Corey Holcomb, who I think is hilarious. I don't necessarily like if he, his comedy is hilarious. If he's talking about anything else outside of his comedy, though, I cannot listen to this nigga, man. Like this nigga is like straight up. He on some bullshit 99% of the time. Well, if you listen to anything outside of his co his comedy, fucking hilarious. Nigga makes me laugh despite myself because he be saying some fucked up shit, right? But he makes me laugh, right? But um, like he comes out and he says, well, shit, Cat Williams is accusing people of stealing jokes when Cat Williams uh stole a joke by JB Smooth, right? And he's talking about, I believe there was a there was a, a comedy special that Cat Williams had filmed in Chicago at the Airy Crown Theater. I'm forgetting the exact name of the special. It wasn't his pimpin' pimpin', and it wasn't uh you know Pimp Chronicles or anything like that. I'm forgetting the name of the special. However, there was a joke that Cat Williams did where he talked about you know getting hype off a particular song. How this song makes you hype no matter what it is you're doing. Uh, I think it was a hustling song by Rick Ross, right? And like there was another clip someone shared of JB Smooth. I don't even know. The, I don't even remember the name of the song. It was mostly the beat, but JB Smooth essentially doing something similar years prior, right? And so he, basically, uh, 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 Corey Holcomb was talking about how yo Cat Williams stole that joke from JB Smooth. And you go to the comments, and people are like, yo. Well, you know, Cat just did it better. You know what I'm saying? Cat, you know, he he remixed it. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't the exact same joke. And it's like, oh, so this is what it is. It's like, yo, y'all like Cat. I like Cat. But Cat is accusing someone of doing something to him. And he's out here doing something, the, the exact same thing he's accusing someone else of doing. And y'all are giving him the pass on this thing. Meanwhile, y'all are ready to rake somebody else over the coals. Over the fact that Cat Williams said this nigga stole my joke, right? I get it. Cat Williams is the people's champ, right? But it is it, is like for me as I'm watching this shit unfold, I'm like, this is really an exam. This is really, really, uh, uh like a, 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 a an examination of like, yo, when we like somebody, <laughs> when we like somebody, man, like we really are ready to like kind of like whatever it is they say, like yeah, we're ready to believe that shit. But the moment we don't like a motherfucker, even if what they saying is true. We ain't really ready to receive it. We just not, man. We just not. And there was a few different times where Cat Williams said something that was kind of ridiculous, but people just kind of let it slide, right? <laughs> just kind of let it slide. So here's one. Here's here's an example. Here's an example. I'm gonna pull this up so you guys can watch uh, right along with me. Here's an example of what I'm talking about. Okay. So uh, let me do this here. Let me share. Add this to the scene, and I'm going to. Uh, uh, I can't exactly maximize this, huh? All right, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to, uh, we're gonna swap this. We're gonna swap this, we're gonna maximize this. All right, so check this out. This is uh, him talking about him reading 3,000 books a year. Check this out, y'all. Fiction books at all. I'm only reading nonfiction. I'm saying, so I'm not just reading, I'm reading in multiple languages. Like I'm, How probably, do you get I'm probably reading 3,000 books a year from the time that I'm eight years old to the time that I'm 12. No, no. And he wasn't reading kitty books. I saw you niggas talking about he was reading kitty. You know, it's easy. He could, you know, kitty books only like four pages long. You know what I'm saying? He was probably reading the Cat in the Hat, Dr. Seuss books. That, should, that nigga said he was reading nonfiction books, 3,000 of them a year from the time he was eight to the time he was 12. That's 12,000 motherfucking books. I'm, I, listen, I know a lot of well-read niggas. I know a lot of well-read niggas. It ain't a whole lot of well-read niggas that I'm wearing 12,000 books, bro. Not by the time they was 12. <laughs> they were not doing it. This nigga wasn't doing it, <laughs> right? This was one of those situations where I was listening to him say this shit, and I'm just like, 
This nigga was clearly lying. Clearly, man. Clearly lying. But he was able to kind of kind of tell some of these ridiculous tales in a way where like you forgot that he just said something fucking ridiculous because you're still stuck on the fact that he said, yo, Cedric the Entertainer stole my joke. I made Steve Harvey run away from comedy, right? I made Steve Harvey run away from comedy. And again, I'm not saying this because I don't like Cat Williams. Again, I like Cat Williams as a comedian. I think the I think the guy is fucking brilliant, man, as a comedian. But it's just interesting, like watching how people were talking about this and receiving this, right? And so um, the other part that I thought was interesting, right? So I'll go back to the, the whole thing with uh, the Steve Harvey and him running Steve Harvey out of comedy. So there was the comedy show that happened right here in Detroit. It was supposedly the championship of comedy, right? And initially that show was supposed to be uh, Steve Harvey's retirement show. Steve Harvey was already talking about retiring from stand-up comedy, right? And at the time, that show wasn't selling out. Steve Harvey wasn't selling that show out. And so they brought Cat Williams on as a part, as a way to kind of boost ticket sales because, you know, at that time, like Cat Williams was hot. Cat Williams had just come out with Pimp Chronicles. Cat Williams had just had his Pimpin' Pimpin'. Cat Williams had like... I'm forgetting like the the there was like a it was like a two or three comedy special sp uh, like split like from like 2000 um like two I want to say like from 2007 to about 2010 Cat Williams had about three or four different comedy specials that he had come out with so Cat Williams was hot right I remember my aunt came here with her dude and like they they drove here from Chicago so that they can go to that show right I was supposed to go to that show thought my aunt was gonna buy them tickets a little miscommunication didn't happen but we went to the waffle house afterwards right no, not the waffle house uh i hop afterwards that's a whole other story they they uh they used to give me shit about the fact that i hop used to like pat you down and shit like if you if you came to the uh the international house of pancakes on jefferson in detroit back then yeah you got you got the pat down <laughs> it was like that right but i remember like how that show was being promoted and stuff like that. And they would call it the championship or like uh, the, the battle between uh, Cat Williams and Steve Harvey. And at the time, again, Steve Harvey was saying like already, Steve Harvey was already saying he's about to retire from comedy, right? He went on the uh, Frankie Darcel show. I believe that was on 92.3, mix 92.3 here in Detroit. He went on the show and basically was like, yo, I'm not, I don't necessarily agree with how they're promoting the show because this ain't no beef between me and Cat, but that's, that, that's just kind of how they're promoting the show. And so I didn't go to the show and they didn't, they, they, there was, there's never been video about the show. I mean, like you've seen somebody's like cell phone video and you know, cell phone video back in 2008, 2009, no matter if you had an Android or an iPhone, it was trash. And, and like the video that they keep showing is still trash now. But essentially Cat Williams, his whole set was, or at least, as like as as a lot of people who have been to that show have like related related to me, Cat Williams supposed like like destroyed Steve Harvey at this set, right? Destroyed him. And again, Steve Harvey said this wasn't what it was for him. Cat Williams went on ahead and like he was really leaning into the whole thing about it being a beef between him and uh and Steve Harvey, partly because Cat Williams took offense to the idea that Steve Harvey would even associate himself or call himself a king of comedy, right? So they're like the promotional stuff that they were doing and whatever. And, and Cat Williams was like, yeah, after you know this, you will no longer consider yourself a king of comedy. That whole shit, right? So a lot of the things that Cat Williams got on there talking about were, um, were a bit uh, personal. Those were personal gripes that Cat Williams had with folks. And it's not to say that everything that Cat Williams was saying was a lie, but there were some things where Cat Williams was, this nigga was clearly lying. <laughs> right? There were some things where he was just clearly lying. Like this nigga told y'all that he ran a 41 fucking 40, man. He ran a 4140. He actually said at one point he ran a 3.9. And like, now nigga, like, come on, bruh. There are niggas in the NFL right now 
The fastest dude in the NFL right now, I believe, is Tyreek Hill. I don't even think Tyreek Hill runs a motherfucking 4140. Right? There's a video circulating right now of Cat Williams supposedly running on a basketball court with his shirt off and shit. I didn't even know who it was supposed to be at first. And then, like, they show him running, and then, like, they cut, they, they do the jump cut of somebody with a cell phone with 4.4 on their phone. Right? And, like, we're supposed to believe that at 52, Cat Williams is running a 4-4 fucking 40. And, like, <laughs> this nigga was clearly lying. Right? <laughs> but, 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 I say all this to say, right? I say all this to say that one of the things that I found very interesting about Cat Williams and his appearance on uh, Club Shay Shay was this. I think it was masterful in the way that Cat Williams went on that show and he essentially was calling out Shannon Sharp for allowing people to come on his platform and tell allegedly, allegedly tell lies, right? While at the same time, clearly lying about some shit on the show. He's calling Shannon Sharp out to his face, and Shannon Sharp is just giggly about the entire thing because Shannon Sharp knows that while he's doing this show, that this show is about to go viral because of all the little people that, you know, that Cat Williams is talking about. He knows, like, the, and he said it, like, yo, this is about to break the internet, the whole, and it did. I think it's already at, like, 30 million fucking views on YouTube at this moment for the entire episode, right? So Shannon Sharp was being called out slyly, not even picking up that he's being called out. At one point, Cat Williams said, you have, an un, uh, like, an unusual allegiance to losers or some shit like that. Fucking brilliant, right? He's calling this dude out for allegedly allowing people to come on his show and lie while at the same time telling lies on, on, on Shannon Sharp's show. And then Shannon Sharp being a little bit kind of more concerned with the fact that this is about to go viral as opposed to not necessarily catching on that Shannon Sharp's integrity is being called out right to his fucking face right right to his fucking face he's being called out and he's not even he appears to not even be aware that he's being called out right brilliant move by cat williams by the way and the other thing is this another thing is this so like as you watch like reactions to uh this this particular uh as I was watching, like, you know, reactions to the, 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 the interview and everything else and like, or better yet, not even so much the reactions to people, like the people who were coming out and responding. Right. So Cedric, the Internet, the entertainer came out with a response. Uh, Ludacris came out with a uh, with a rap response. Uh, uh, Ricky Smiley came out with a response. And like it was interesting to listen to people say, well, shit. They responding to Cat Williams. But they ain't saying that Cat Williams lying. And to me, I'm looking at these responses like, nigga. Because again, it's clear that this nigga was clearly lying. But also, every last one of those responses was saying that that nigga was clearly lying. <laughs> right? They were responding to this dude saying, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's his perspective on this shit. But here's what I here's how I see what happened. And yeah. That ain't what it was, right? That's not what it was. So they're telling this dude that, like, yo, they, they, they're explaining this, like, yo, this nigga is lying, right? But people, because, again, because of who we like, because of who we like, we, uh, you know, we'll, we'll be more receptive to the message coming from the people that we like. I'll give you a perfect example of this. Uh, Monique. Monique came out. And she talked about how, you know, when she was when when it came to promoting the movie Precious, how the industry wanted her to come out and promote this movie uh, for free. And uh, she said she couldn't do it. And, uh, you know, she was blackballed by the industry for doing that. Right. But the other part about it is this, um, you know, when she came out with her Netflix boycott, you know, and she talked about how uh, because of her pedigree not only as a comic but also as an actress and like something like the the awards that she has and like how she was negotiating with netflix and netflix tried to lowball her as a comic um i remember when people were talking about how much uh you know monique was tripping 
Monique should negotiate, you know, like Monique was out of pocket. They're like people at the time, they weren't ready to hear that message coming from Monique because they didn't like Monique, right? Taraji P. Henson comes out with some of the same gripes about compensation for women, black women in particular, in Hollywood, and suddenly everybody fucking gets it. Everybody's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that's fucked up. And fuck, it's fucked up that Oprah would do this. And I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. But like Monique was out here saying this years ago when y'all were ready. I was like, hey, whatever, girl, go ahead somewhere with that shit. Right? Because it's about who you like. It's about who y'all like, man. It's no, it's no deeper than that. It really is. It, it really is. Whether you like, like you were ready to receive it when you like somebody. When you don't like somebody and you like, ah, eh, whatever. Right? So I, I I just, it was, it was kind of, you know, as I was watching this happen, I was looking and I told people on my Facebook, I said, man, when I get on the mic, y'all might, y'all gonna probably be upset with me because I was like, it was hard for me to like kind of watch people and just be like, really? Like you too? Like you on that shit too? Like, come on, man. Come on, man. Because again, this, <laughs> this nigga was clearly lying for real, bro for real so um yeah man uh cat williams set the internet on fire though he really did he really did and um another thing another thing that i think is kind of brilliant about this is that like uh you know now cat williams has his name out and other people are you know uh their names are out like what what does this translate into you know right because people again we live in an, in an attention you know attention is currency now you know, and so long as people are paying your attention for the moment, you better strike while the iron is hot so that you can get some shit moving. And so it's going to be interesting to see how people move going forward to see if they, you know, going to kind of piggyback off of this attention to Cat, not only brought to them, but also if Cat is able to catapult this into something more for himself, right? Because I also remember how some of y'all were saying, you know, these last few Cat Williams specials weren't that funny, right? We love Cat. But I pay attention, niggas. Like I like some of y'all out some of y'all out here clearly lying too. Right? <laughs> some of y'all out here clearly lying. But uh we got a couple uh comments here in the chat here. Let me pull this up. And uh let's see. Uh GS28 says, C SPAN, that's why I mess with you. Your balance is hey, I'm not even trying to be like, I'm just trying to, I'm, I'm, I'm keeping it as real as I possibly can, man, because this is how I was experiencing this shit. And I'm just like, eh, come on, y'all. Come on, man. I get it. We having fun. But at the same time, I'm watching y'all niggas get like, eh, eh. you know, but I appreciate you, brother. I appreciate, I appreciate you with the, with the comment, man. But yo, man, so that's in, that's in Blue Blazers. Now 